Author Dean Kuntz has written more than 100 books, including 13 number one bestsellers. You're incredibly prolific. Where does that come from? The imagination's a muscle, partly, and the more you use it, the easier it becomes. His success, he ranks number six among the world's best paid writers, has built him a stunning California home he calls Amazing Grace. You spent seven years building the house? With carved bookcases in his library. The woodwork here is meant to look like an opening book, the pages of a book. And custom stainless steel doors. These are all your books. Yes, these are all mine. There's over 6,000 editions so far. And, uh, and how many different countries? 38 languages. Kuntz has sold more than 400 million books worldwide. When the day's going really bad and I can't get any good prose out, I come out here and stand in the hall and say, OK, I did it once. I can do it again. Uh, so. He does it on an 18-year-old computer. So you don't have you don't have email on here, or no, no, this no. is just a word processor. I don't personally do email. If I do an email, I give it to an assistant. I write it out. I might make a disk of it and give it to her. It's it's Isn't a little it bit easier just to do the email. You should be grateful I don't have a steam-driven computer. <laughs> uh. Kuhn has written suspense novels, thrillers, science fiction, but a few years ago he wrote his first non-fiction book about a 60-pound golden retriever. She arrived with her name, Trixie. I joke sometimes that it sounded more like a stripper than a dog. A big little life was Kuhn's tribute to his dog, who lived less than 12 years. The more I watched her, she seemed to be the embodiment of grace and more. The 65-year-old writer rarely does television interviews, but he granted this one in part because he wanted to talk about Trixie. And I kept being changed by this dog, by her exuberance, and it opened my eyes to how much I started turning off the beauty of the world out of busyness. Trixie came to Kuntz and his wife, Jurda, when she was three years old. From Canine Companions for Independence, an organization that trains assistance dogs. Yes, good boy. Good. She'd helped a young woman who'd lost both her legs before a joint injury forced Trixie into retirement. Kuntz recalls a mystical moment with his dog when they were lying in the hall, staring into each other's eyes. And I said, I know what you really are. And she raised her head up and gave me this strange expression and I said, you're not a dog, you're an angel. And she shot to her feet and ran the length of this hall and stood at the far end. And I actually had to get down on the floor and coax her to me. And I brought her to me and it had put the hairs up in the back of my neck. And I said, all right, I'll never say that to you again. I say in the book, I think she was a theophany, an entrance of God into my life. In many ways, Kuntz's memoir is as much about himself as it is Trixie. He grew up poor in this four-room house in Pennsylvania that didn't have indoor plumbing until he was 11. His childhood was overshadowed by a father who held 44 jobs in 34 years. My father was a violent alcoholic. It wasn't great having to walk with your mother to whatever bar room he passed out in it and pick him up at two in the morning because they called him, you know, and he had the only car we had. But I was not an unhappy kid. At age four, while his mother was hospitalized for six months, Kuntz was sent to live with a neighbor. And every night she would read me a story before putting me to bed and give me an ice cream soda. And many years later, I came to believe that's where I associated storytelling and stories with happiness and calm. In college, Kuntz won a writing contest. He married Jurda, his high school sweetheart, in 1966. So and after he sold a couple of short stories, she made him an offer. And she said, I'll support you for five years. And if you can't make it in five years, you'll never make it. And I tried to negotiate her up to seven, but she has Sicilian blood. So she wins negotiations. And uh, she... Uh, That's a pretty good deal. It's a good deal. Oh, everyone in the fa her family thought I was a bum. But her belief in me was really profound, and it, it always has been. Jurda would eventually quit her job to manage the business side of Kuntz's booming career. Hard workers, they never had children, and resisted even having a dog. But losing Trixie to cancer devastated them. My wife and I couldn't hardly mention that dog's name for six months that we didn't start crying.
I sort of stole this from uh, Lord Byron. In Trixie's memory, they put a plaque on their porch, and they've contributed millions to canine companions. Uh-oh. And now Anna, Trixie's great niece, is gracing their lives. But while we were visiting, Kuntz revealed that we almost lost him in February. And I suddenly broke into a sweat. Do you remember passing out? No, I have no memory of it at all. A bleeding ulcer caused the author to black out. I woke up lying on my office floor in a pool of blood with my eyebrow cut all the way across and hanging down over my, it was a very Hannibal Lecter sort of moment. He'd lost and half his blood, but Kuhn says he uh, never felt any pain. Practice. If you've really got to nearly die, and I was told there were several times I should have died in the hospital, if you've got to nearly die, that's the way to do it. Uh, no pain, uh, no fear, and a very quick recovery. And the author of a hundred books says it's given him many ideas for more. Do you see an end point to this? I don't think writers who love what they do retired until they fall dead in the keyboard. I, I nearly did reasonably, but <laughs> I, uh, it still hasn't stopped me.